Good morning. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Well, I appreciate you for asking me. We have a lot of listeners that request your Concrete Blonde song, Joey, Mexican oh. Moon, Take Me Home. Uh, they're always okay. on my list almost every every weekend. Really? Just so you know, well, yes. This is, I, think, uh, I think I enjoy this one. My first question to really start us off is first really just about your career because you had a successful 30-year career. So I just have to ask what it's like to have the life of a rock star. <laughs> okay, that's a good question because um, I'll start off by saying, number one, people's idea of success is very, very different. You'd have to ask first, what is your concept of success? Um, the second thing is, um, I know a very famous rock star who hates being called a rock star because he'd prefer being called an artist, and I prefer being called an artist as well. There are rock stars and there are artists. You know, a rock star may need um, five cars, three houses, uh, you know, 16 pairs of shoes, and uh, to be noticed and photographed all the time. An artist really is happier just sitting in the corner doing what it is that they started doing in the first place. Mm-hmm. And my idea of success is being happy. And, and no one can be happy 24 hours a day. It's just not the way the human condition works. But when I look around me, you know, I was just I just had a, a really, really wonderful artist, Jessica Von Rabbit from a band called Graham Rabbit out here in the desert. And we hung out and made some great music the other night. And we were discussing that very thing. And I said, you know, we were wondering, are we, are we where we should be? You know, should you be doing... It? Uh, you know, the Dalai Lama said that contentment is destroyed by comparison. And so I don't compare myself with anybody. You know, I have my five acres in the desert. I have my horse. I have my goat. I have my guitar. I have my typewriter. And I uh, could not be happier. And... Back in the day when it was rolling really hard, you know, everybody was, you know, we got to have all this, we got to have all that, you know. Uh, you know, when you get a whole crew to work for you, you know, it becomes about them. It becomes about, is our bus bigger? Do we have more buses than, more buses than the next guy? And it becomes a real, it, it just becomes so far away than, than how you started. And to reconnect with that feeling that I had. Um, when I was a kid and sitting on my bed playing guitar and writing songs when I was 12 years old, that is how I at least want to feel. And if mm-hmm. I can do that, then I am successful. And if I can be, you know, if I can eat every day, if I can, you know, hang out with my dogs and hang out with good friends, it really is that easy. It really is that easy. But for a period of time, if you go through that sort of cycle, you really, you know, it breaks up bands. People start marrying strippers. People start <laughs> Paying alimony, paying job uh-huh. for, then you're broke, and then you know the business. Right. Is, you know you've got to you've got to keep the middle way, you know, and just just remain close to what's essential. Um, and so I'm extremely grateful that I can still play music and make mm-hmm. a living doing that, in spite of um, all kinds of things that come up. You know, um, taxes are crazy in California. I mean, that's mm-hmm. really a huge a huge thing. So, but I I basically am grateful to keep my head above water. Mm -hmm. Um, doing what everybody else in this country is doing, working hard for a living. And I I play, I go out and tour a week out of the month. I might have to do that more next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm lucky that I discovered a new neighbor who I can trust to take care of my family, my animals. (laughs) And uh, that's the most important thing to me. And that's hard out here because it takes a lot of gas to get out to my place if you could find it. I can imagine. Uh, But it's, it's fun for a week. It's a blast. It's a blast. You know, you just like... You know, burn out there for four shows, and it's just party. Like, it's just great. But when it was seven months at a time, you know, it wasn't fun at all. And I don't want this never to be fun. So I endeavor and work very hard to keep it fun. And as long as it's fun and it's creative and I'm inspired, then that's great. But when I start just slogging through it and going through the motions, there's a million other things I'd rather do. With the Naked album, your newest album, it's all original. Uh, you wrote it. You wrote yeah. everything. You're performing everything. So where did this come yeah. from? What inspired you to say to, to wake up and say, you know, what, I I want to do this. I want to create a new album. Where did the ideas for the songs come from? Well, I've been uh, you know I I've been uh, touring solo for over a year now, almost two years, and I've been developing uh, this show, which consisted of playing songs, of course, new and old, uh, reading from my book. 
um, and and having projections of illustrations from my book. And usually, actually, I'll get to the I'll get to the gig, and I'll look around the room and I'll draw it on the spot, and then I'll hit up the front of house sound man guy and I'll go, hey man, project this. this is cool. So if I'm in Chicago, I'll draw something for Chicago. If I'm in Minneapolis, I'll draw something for Minneapolis. And it's been really fun and really spontaneous. And so uh, I've really loved the show. But I I knew for the last year and a half almost or two years that I was looking for the right place and the right situation to shoot the show for DVD because I've had to really fight a lot against people uh, YouTubing stuff and doing a bad job of it Mm -hmm. and for a lot of that stuff there's a lot of legal battles going on that I don't get paid for a lot of that stuff and it's not the audience's fault to know how the music business works but they don't realize that when they're shooting and posting something the record company may be getting paid for it but they're not paying me for 15 years almost so it's been an ongoing battle to get that straight so it, it but it's it, 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 like everything there's been a, a good flip side to that which means like okay i know how this works now that means that i have to get new stuff out there that i own and that i can get you know put up there but i wanted to do a dvd with the quality that i want and that the fans deserve you don't deserve a crappy little shadowy bad sounding YouTube thing of a song was a big deal, you right. know. It, it, it sounds like you just, it's just not right. And if, if you knew that I wasn't getting paid for it, would you do it anyway? Some people can be real, you know, insert swear word here about that. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. funny that you mention YouTube because I know you've been in the music industry for a long time, and I wonder if you've seen the music industry change just with the rise of the Internet. YouTube, yes, it's very important, and that, that's kind of the new face of where things belong. And I think YouTube just ended up paying a whole lot of money for the record business for exactly what I just said. It's like, you know, you're putting videos up that the people are shooting, that music belongs to us, and like I say, they don't necessarily, not necessarily pay the artist, but they do own it, and so mm-hmm. you got to pay the piper, man, and so, and so they did, you know? And so I've been working on this show that is very balanced. Um, it has the music that I know people like from Concrete Bomb, but it also has the music that keeps me wanting to wake up every morning. Mm-hmm. And I finally found a way to do it. I didn't want a live audience because live audiences are not predictable. And somebody may scream something out stupid and, you right. know, throw, throw it all together. And so, and, and uh, you know, I want to do it in Australia, then I want to do it here, but I wanted to see it through and make it the best product that I possibly could. Okay, naked album. You got back to that. So I want to record it out, but I didn't know how to do it because I'm out in the desert. I can't, I don't, I can't go to LA, uh, you know, or anywhere for that long a time and really afford it and have people take care of my horse and everything else in my home and I'm happier at home so my friend Brian Manziel who uh, worked for Leon Russell as I did and uh, when you work for Leon there's not quite an experience like it he's really a god pretty much and um, your standards are pretty high and uh, Brian uh, he's done websites and graphics from my sketchbook records and he's just been a good friend of mine for a long time and is a brilliant guitar player himself but he actually just, he has a, a, a mobile lab, and it's called Mobile Lab, and he uh, lives in it, and it's, really, it's a state-of-the-art uh, trailer, and he just said, he, taught, he just talked me into it. I was really mm-hmm. depressed because I didn't know, I knew I had a record in me because I'd been playing new songs for a year, but I didn't know how I was going to record it, and there wasn't anywhere around here that I wanted to do it, and nothing felt right. And, and he said, well, you know what, why don't I bring the mobile unit out there, because you have to make a record, you just do. And, uh, and he brought the mobile unit out, uh, I think it was July, for the month of July out here in the heat of the summer, and uh, uh, pretty much was nocturnal because it was so damn hot. <laughs> Sorry, darn hot. <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, uh, and so he talked me into doing it, and he ran the lines and the mics into my cabin. And uh, my cabin has uh, brick floors and uh, a, wood, a wooden door and, and shutters, and so I can control the sound. I know how to do that. I've recorded here before. Mm-hmm. But I was tired. You know, my, my technical stuff, you have to upgrade your gear all the time, and it's a real pain, mm-hmm. and it's really expensive. And I'm really tired of doing it because right. by the time you upgrade your gear, your Pro Tools or whatever, it's just like I'm so burned out. I just don't want to be in front of a computer anymore. Right. And it really does take a lot of time, at least lately. You know, I'm over it. I just want to 
sit down and play. Right. Because I've had a good time doing it, you know. And so Brian ran in the mics and ran everything in and recorded it. And um, and it was just absolutely great. And I'm really mm-hmm. proud of it. And it's just a strange little record. It was mm-hmm. just, it, but, I, but I've been playing these. It was just really, really, uh, really great to be at home, you know. But to know, like, it wasn't going to sound like a home recording. It was going right. to sound like... You know, because Brian knows what he's doing, and and um, and it just and my play sounds great. You know, I know how right. sound works, and it sounds really good. So thanks to Brian, I actually got that record done, and um, and I really really like it. Mm-hmm. You know, I really like it a lot. You can really hear the emotion in the songs from the new album, and I particularly enjoy the song. And I want to ask you about it, and it could just be on my mind because Christmas is around the corner, but it's not even that because when I my heard it, song. yeah, who is that about? <laughs> I stopped on that song and I've listened to it. I listened to it and I listened to it again and again. Uh, it was my favorite one on the whole album, so I had to ask about that. Well, I love to hear you say that because I've wanted to write a Christmas song for a long time. I wrote one many years ago called Merry Christmas, Mommy, when my nieces were three or four, but I never got around to recording it and they're too old to sing it now. I've always wanted to do a Christmas song. That's it. It's about my father and someone else. You're the first one that could actually call me on that. Like, who's, it, who's it about? Um, a lot of people ask me what things are about. Uh, Joey, obviously, which is obviously uh, or not about one person. But generally, the, uh, if, an emotion, if an emotion is strong enough for me to actually sit down and write about it, it's because there's many drops of water in the wave, you know? Right. And uh, it's like, okay, all right, the wave is going to break, and now I've now I got to write about this. And one of my favorite songs, and that you now that you mentioned that with some of your other, your Concrete Blonde stuff is uh, When I Was a Fool. I'm almost 30 uh, years old. I'm not married. I don't fit into the mold of what a woman should be at my age. And my aunt said to me, you know, you have to listen to this song. And I, I love that song, you know, and it's, I don't know. I just want to say thank you for writing that song because I think I'm not the only person who can relate. And it's just, I don't know, it's just very personal and it's very honest. There you go. And, and you know, um, that's people still, for, for as far as we've come, I still see people going through that doubt. I was just with a, a friend of mine the other night and she's just brilliant and a beautiful musician. And she's just like, well, I just turned 40, like she's panicking. And I'm like, well, dude, I'm 58, and I'm not even panicking. I'm so past that panic, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I'm having the best time I've ever had. There are no rules. There never were. And I, and why we create that for ourselves, and generally we don't. It's usually, you know, you're in a family where, you know, oh, when are you going to have kids? The first mm-hmm. thing, the first thing uh, people will ask you, uh, you know, and, and I don't know how many brothers and sisters or anything that you have, or it doesn't even matter, mm-hmm. but the first thing people, or even your friends, if you go to a wedding, it's like, well, are you next? You know oh, what yeah. I mean? It's just like, ah! First you're wrong! I think about, uh, maybe a, a little bit of it is biological, like you feel the clock ticking thing whatever but i think most of it is social pressure and yeah. i just wish people would stop freaking breathing right you know, we only have so much water and air <laughs> right it's true it's true and there's so many children who are homeless and there's so many you know there's Thank so you many very much. exactly you know yeah because you need to see a little version of yourself well let's switch gears for a moment and talk a bit about rough mix i don't know if you okay. have any little excerpts and we can read them and give us sort of a sneak peek. I wanted to really know why you decided to put all of this in writing. Well, I knew uh, for, for years that I, I was going to do this. I mean, that's what I wanted to be in the first place was a writer because um, I was I was always a reader, a voracious reader since I was a very little kid. And I knew that I always wanted to write. And so I knew that this would be a great thing to have in my hip pocket when I got too old to hop on and off a stage or whatever. And so I knew I always wanted to do this. And I knew instinctively that the longer I waited, the more I would have to write about, you know. And so um, I always wanted to do this. And I finally felt like, well, this is the right time. I'm going to throw this book down. And, um, and, and I will read a little something for you. And I think this is for your fans particularly. Because this is w- one of the questions that I, I am asked the most is, who is Joey about? Mm-hmm. And so here I go. Mark Moreland and I were in a bar in Europe or London somewhere, Mexico, could have been Mexico. We were knocking back shots and beers. Mark was, as usual, smoking. We sat and drank, donuts of smoke circling our heads, an ashy veil of haze between us. Is Joey about me? said Mark, hitting his cigarette. Yeah, I said, sipping my beer. Mark thought for a minute and blew a long, slow stream of smoke. 
do you owe me money? He said. <laughs> no, I said. <laughs> oh, okay, he said, and picked up his drink. We sure had a good time, didn't we? Now, Mark and I had a band called Pretty and Twisted, but before that, he was in a band called Wall of Voodoo and wrote a song called Mexican Radio, for which he was never paid. And uh, we hung out a lot. And we had Pretty and Twisted. He passed away at the age of 44 in France of uh, cirrhosis of the liver. And uh, I, I'd say I miss him, but he's never really gone away. Mm. <laughs> and the French gave him a good, because Americans will tell you that you only have a, a, you know, a few months to live, but he went to France and they transplant, transplanted uh, another liver because they have socialized medicine over there. But he wasn't healthy enough for it to take. And so he passed away. And it was really, it was pretty devastating for sure. Mm. But we spent a lot of time together. We made a lot of great music together. And that is who Joey is, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Members of my band really hated that song, by the way. I love them dearly, but it really hurt me when they didn't like that song. Because uh, to me, it was nailing it, you know? It was really right. good. Songs come through me. It's not like I sit there and construct them. I channel them. So I trust what comes through. Because there's a lot of work being done from the other side to send you that stuff on a mm -hmm. Nikola Tesla level. You know, I generally will wake up at two or three in the morning and have, and, and the moon or something sends me a song. And it's my job to record that or write it down and not forget it. On the uh, Naked record that I wrote about Billy Holiday, and I used chords that I don't even know. I just had to sound them out by ear. But I like, it's not like I sat down and knew what even I was playing, but I, it's one of the best songs I've ever written, you know? Mm -hmm. And so those things come from somewhere else, you know, poetry, art, all that sort of stuff. It comes from somewhere else. It's just you, you, you're tuned into a higher frequency, I believe. What actually can we look out for for 2016? You talked a little bit about touring. Um, what Can you give just a brief just sort of synopsis of what we can look, look out for for the new year? Well, I'll always do that. I'll always go out a week out of the month. Uh, so I'm already booked in Texas in February, um, uh, I think it's Houston, Dallas, and Austin, um, and uh, I've been going back and forth with Australia, where I'd like to get back to uh, this year, um, but the DVD is the most important thing that I want to see come out, so I'm, I'm, I'm really looking around for some help with that, because I financed the first half of it, the second half I would need a little bit of help, and I really want wider distribution for that than something I could do myself. I like to be doing the self-release thing, I really do, but I just think this work is, deserves more than I can give it. So once again, I'm looking at like possible distribution, labels, and all that sort of stuff. That's my least favorite thing to do because, ah, they, you know, it's for a lot of reasons. But I think I'm going to manage it with this. The DVD is good, but I, I do believe that it will probably come from um, uh, from another country before it comes from here. But I but I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. I'm looking through my notes here and I we really covered a lot. Is there anything else that you, you wanna add or go over? Anything about your your new album or the book? No, I'm just really pleased that you asked me about both those things. That makes me very mm -hmm. happy. Because I don't really um I don't really like to be classified in the past so yeah. some of the offers that we get from Europe it's like well we're going to put you on with all these 80s bands well I never really mm. related to that in the first place so I, I don't want to be held in any particular time right. and I really um, I really appreciate you asking me about those things mm -hmm. because I very much live in the present and the past and the future is always uh, in the present you know thank you so much I appreciate it oh sweetheart my pleasure
Cigarettes and stormy 